In June, it'll be two years since two of my guests on this week's programme were first taken to court after being arrested in the northern part of Cyprus. Shinel Senem Hussein and Koray Bashdorutmachi are both on the line for flying the Cypriot flag. With them, and joining us on the programme, is one of their Greek Cypriot supporters, and they have many. She is Tina Adamido. Thank you all very much for joining me. Can we start, Chanel, by you explaining what you were charged with? You are Cypriots, you live in Cyprus, and you were flying the Cyprus flag. Yes, it first started at 21 June 2013, and we were taken to court by um, opening three Cyprus flags by saying TRNC is a fake government, we do not recognise TRNC, um, our government and flag is Republic of Cyprus. So it was seen as a challenge to the occupying authorities in the north of Cyprus. Yes. When you flew those flags, you must have known it would not be viewed very favourably. What did you expect to happen? Well, we were expecting to get arrested. It was nothing surprising because it's an occupied area and it's the occupied rules going on. But one day before we done this, the Prime Minister of Turkey, Recep Tayyip Erdogan, had invited Republic of Cyprus to the Mediterranean Games in Mersin. And he waved at that flag, he watched the games, but before he said that there was no century country of Republic of Cyprus. He said that he doesn't recognise Republic of Cyprus. But that day, it's showing that he does recognise it. Because the Cypriot flag was flown yes, at those games? Yes, it was waved in Turkey, in Mersin, Trabzon, Istanbul, in every games. So we done a protest, why is it um, forbidden in our country? Famagusta is a part of Cyprus, even if it's occupied. So we done a protest with three Cyprus flags. And then the police came, attacked us, prisoned us for six hours, and we were taken to court on 21 January 2014. Now it's nearly two years that we are at court. And the case has not actually even started being heard, is my understanding. You've been to court how many times? Uh, about 15, 15 times, or maybe more, I can't remember. It was too many. And, and what do they say, Korai, when you go to court? Why do they keep adjourning this? Why won't they hear the case? I give answer for uh, reality because two times we are the reason because my wife is... Was pregnant. I and, was uh, pregnant. Before born, we, need, uh, we use one and after uh, we use another one. And uh, interesting, the judgment uh, lady and she was the uh, same problem, uh, she used about five, six times. So it wasn't that they didn't seem to want to start hearing the case? Um, I want to add that the uh, prosecutor has been changing all the time at the court case. We first started with one, then he said that I can't do this, he changed it to another one, then he changed it to another one, one, then he changed it to another one. So, because the prosecutor is not ready at the case, it hasn't been starting. Now, what happened when you went this week? Because it has been going on a long time, and I think that, uh, Tina, you can perhaps come in here, some deals were offered. Yes. What went on when the court appearance well, earlier this week? Basically, there was a lot more publicity um, before the court case uh, this time. We had quite a few supporters at the court, and... Um, the solicitor, Karai's solicitor, um, he was actually called in before the um, actual entry into the courtroom to try a form of plea, uh, plea bargaining, mm -hmm. and they were actually given three offers. And each one of them they actually refused mm -hmm. because they are innocent and they believe that there's nothing to be guilty about. And so that was when, unfortunately, we were told and they were threatened that there is going to be an additional charge given to the couple, which um, is basically uh, referring to the criminal uh, penalty law, 47, I think, the articles 47 and 48, for inciting uh, unrest and bullying tactics, basically, against the TRNC. They're trying to bring down the TRNC, which can be uh, very similar to treason, 
that's what they've seen, and can carry up to a penalty of five years imprisonment. That's aside from their other charges as well. So they haven't, but they haven't brought these charges yet. They're threatening. They have threatened to bring them, and uh, which was very unusual in my opinion. They have actually given a date for one week later, the 21st of May, and they've actually given a time for two o'clock, which is again is unusual because the court cases are usually heard in the morning. So this seems that it either will go on behind closed doors or something very unusual is happening. Now, I know you've seen President Anastasiades, yes. and I believe he said he would speak to Mustafa Akinci. Do you hold out any hope that the leaders themselves can somehow help you? Because I suppose quite a lot of people would also say that politicians should not interfere in the due course of justice and the law. What, what are you hoping their influence, if any, can be? First of all, uh, we are not politicians, we are uh, standard people of Cyprus. Mr. Anastasia, this president of the Republic of Cyprus, gave a rendezvous to us and uh, he said he is very proud and uh, he gave support to us to everywhere. And uh, we said before, we use this case court case, after finish we will go European Court of Justice and we give a petition, uh, Tina Adami to start okay. this petition in the f Facebook. We basically started a petition asking, well it's a petition to the leaders as well as the European Courts and uh, the President of the European Union plus a few other people including the Foreign Ministers of Greece and Turkey to have all the charges dismissed against them because it is really a farce. They shouldn't even come to court. And the UN as well, Mr. Ban Ki-moon. Mm -hmm. And uh, so far we have tried to get as many signatures as possible. It's gone mainly on Facebook, it's gone viral, and we've got about one and a half thousand signatures so far. So you want people to visit uh, yes, what do. Facebook page to um, sign? Uh, they can actually go on to I'm a Cypriot, not a martyr. It's on there. Mm -hmm. My own personal one, Tina Rather Middle. You will find the petition there as well. Or the, the guys themselves, Cryo Chanel's Facebook pages. It's publicised all over. And so you want lots of people to sign okay. that. And when are you planning to send it off, as it were? We have actually given uh, the first lot of names to President Anastasiades when we had the meeting with him. We are hoping to give it to Mr. Kinji as soon as we can get an appointment with him. And the European Union will follow as soon as we manage to get an appointment with their representatives probably here in Cyprus. Okay, well, the, the next court appearance then is 21st. Yes. And you really don't know what's going to happen, do you? No, we don't. We have no idea because they keep on changing things and trying to add things uh, and trying to find more guiltiness about us. But we believe at the end we will win. All Cypriots will be the winners and Cyprus will be united again. That's what I want. You mentioned that you were pregnant when this all started. I mean, this must be having a huge impact on your family life, yeah. Chanel. Yes, of course. I have to leave my children behind to go to the court. Um, his jobs are going down because the ideology that we are thinking of, the things that we are doing. So, uh, he sits at the shop place, Tavla drinks coffee with his friends. <laughs> Our life has changed a lot. Because of, of that act. Do you regret what you did? No. If, I, if I, I had the chance to go back, I would have done it again. So there you have it. It's uh, Chanel Senem Hussein and Koray Bashdorut Machi, along with Tina Adamidu, spelling out for us a really kangaroo court style event going on now for nearly two years in the occupied areas of Cyprus. Keep up to